Today we're gonna to do the most exciting thing in the world. We're gonna calibrate lenses and we're not going to use one of these. Um, I find that these are not so great and they're not so fun to use and I'm always second guessing myself like what is, what's, what's more in focus, what's less in focus. This is a way that Abdullah uh, from BJ Photo, these are his instructions, gave me and it's a much more organic and natural process and I feel like I have a definitive answer at the end of the lens calibration. Um, I've just purchased this new Nikon 58 1.4 and out of the box, I can tell already it's a little bit soft so I'm going to go through the AF fine tune adjustment with you right now. Step one, you're gonna go into your settings and you're gonna find set picture control. You're going to go into flat profile and you're going to hit right on that and you're going to adjust the sharpening all the way down to zero. After you've done that, you're gonna set your lens to wide open, which in this case is f1.4. Um, and you're gonna set your focus point to single point autofocus so you can specifically select a thing. Um, and you're gonna set it to AFS so it's not constantly kind of making micro adjustments. Now you're gonna find something. Uh, I have found this Betty Crocker mug cake, rainbow bit specifically of variety. You wanna find something that has a little bit of contrast, a little bit of detail so you can actually compare frames. I'm gonna put that at a distance that I would typically use this lens at. Um, after this, we're going to take it out and do more tests at different distances, but for now, um, we're going to be doing this distance here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into, going to go into the setup menu, AF fine tune, AF fine tune on, saved value. We are going to start at zero. So frame number one is going to be focused specifically on the G of mug cake. You can use a tripod if you want something more exact, but my shutter speed is high enough that I'm not worried too much about shaking and um, blurring a frame out. Then after you take the zero, you go to plus one and you do the exact same thing. You focus away so it has a chance to refocus. And what you're doing is taking one frame at zero, then plus one, then plus two. Um, I've already done the minuses. The minuses were no good on this specific lens. So if you, uh, if you, if nothing's really working, try the entire chart. Um, one very interesting thing with Nikon specifically, um, with a Nikon D850 and the newer lenses, um, is that it's not really a linear process anymore. It used to be with my Nikon D700. If zero was kind of bad, that one would be a little bit better and two would be a little bit closer and then three would be bang on. In the newer cameras with this Nikon specifically, I've found that I can get good values out of like plus three and plus 10, which is super confusing. Uh, but that means you basically have to test everything to make sure that you are finding in fact the best possible value. All right, so now after you've done one through 10 or one through 15, um, I would recommend doing as many as you possibly can. Uh, you zoom in to 100%. On a Nikon D850, you can zoom in um, a little bit beyond 100%. The, interpolation is pretty good. Um, and you just use the wheel to go back through all the images. And you kind of start, you count out loud, so you're like plus 10, plus nine, plus eight, plus seven, plus six, plus five, plus four, plus three, plus two, plus one, zero. So zero is no good, one isn't very good, two isn't very good, three is good, um, three is significantly better than two, uh, four isn't as good as three, Five isn't as good as three. Six isn't as good as three. Seven isn't as good as three. Eight is pretty good. Nine is good. 10 isn't as good as nine. So now that I have kind of the three top values, I'm going to go back and I'm going to test them in different locations around here and decide on what the actual best value is for this lens. But any of those values are significantly better than leaving it at zero, which it came straight out of the box. If you're trying to AF fine tune a wide angle lens, I usually start at wide angle and I run this test and then I zoom in all the way to telephoto and I run the test again at that. And I find any common answers um, or common correct top values that were between all of those. Unfortunately for some lenses, you're not going to get a consistent value all the way through that zoom lens. But for primes, I've noticed that it's really good. If you're on the Sigma Art series, um, you actually have to use a Sigma Art dock. I find that at least with focus distances with a Nikon lens specifically is that for the most part, if it's a plus three and it's a Nikon Prime, it's a plus three um, at any focus distance, infinity or two meters or um, as close as it can focus. But with Sigma art lenses, I find that um, that they can be completely different values at all of those distances. So you have to almost run this test at every single possible distance, unfortunately. Hopefully this was valuable to you. I think it's something that um, not a lot of photographers talk about on the internet. So um, start fine tuning your lenses, make them as best as they possibly could be. You spent the money on them, so you might as well make them. Perfect. Until next time, I'm Taylor Jackson. Don't forget to subscribe.